Hi, my name is Julie Betty. I work for SEMA Plus, and I've done so for 10 years, which is an uh, engineering firm, multidisciplinary, which works so in different areas, um, building, energy, infrastructures, uh, urban services, among others, as many. When I started at SEMA Plus, I was fortunate enough to work with a very innovating customer and team to implement a method uh, that included COA, CAO 3D and PLM. The idea was to create a model where everything resided in a unique database uh, where all the people could, could communicate more efficiently and make modifications while measuring the impacts throughout the project, uh, the different uh, steps of the project. The teams uh, then uh, broke down into different disciplines and developed uh, uh, parametric uh, models, uh, banks of catalogs, uh, uh, lists of material, and so on. I look, looked at uh, potential clashes and ways of improving productivity, efficiency with interfaces that made it possible to have uh, analysis, uh, structural analysis, finished elements, and so on, all with the purpose to become more efficient in our designs. After many years, and thanks to a, a very uh, insightful team and the right tools, right software from different companies, we were able to obtain really interesting elements in the context of new projects. However, in the context of existing projects, it was a little more complicated. So to analyze impacts with new equipment, uh, sorry, uh, an, uh, an, uh, analyzing the impact of new equipment uh, uh, within an existing environment when we're based on plans that are more or less up to date, it's a bit difficult. So uh, to synchronize uh, the different disciplines, um, within the project when each of, of the uh, people from each discipline went out on the uh, work site at different times, uh, according to different data, the interaction among the different disciplines becomes uh, not easy because uh, we're not always working from the same uh, data. And also, the, uh, the working with the different spaces and their access, uh, closed spaces, uh, areas of high tension uh, or, or hazardous materials. Um, all of that makes things rather difficult for our technicians, engineers, to document. Uh, and we realized that we needed to find a, a method to better document uh, the work. Now, for pictures with a thousand words, you know, uh, how many then, uh, what is worth then of an image that represents uh, 3D models? Well, over the last few years, we developed different tools that made it possible for us to better document uh, our documents. We will always adapt them according to the method required. So there were some of a, a middle scope, if you want, of both from inside and outside a building, and then some longer scope. Uh, for bridges of bigger structures. Um, we also do some at a micro precision level for, and also yeah, we use a photometry for very quick projects, and rather simpler ones. So the gains that we've obtained with the 3D documents are numerous. Here are a few projects that we did over the last well, the last year, finally. What's interesting is that we have many projects that are very far up north and in Ontario. We have 27 offices in, in Canada, so we really work through, throughout Canada, even in Africa. So to send our, techni our technicians, engineers in Africa or in northern Canada is costly, so we documented the site in a very complete manner. And so it's very interesting for us to work this way. We can save many repetitive visits. So what you see in these images, these are work sites that are very uh, remote, where we were able to document the internal and external aspects of the site in order to have all uh, and, uh, the different information, MEP structural, and so on, from each of the disciplines that participated in the project.
OK. Alors, uh, last five minutes, uh, last um, comment. OK. So here we <coughs> use a web interface that makes it possible to communicate. We've got uh, some uh, picture bubbles that makes it possible, uh, different examples to document <coughs> the closed spaces. And we have a lot of projects for architectural analysis. Uh, churches and so on. So if you're interested, come and see me. I've got many more examples to show you. Thank you.